for Algebra 2 with Trig. This is our piecewise function, day one. A piecewise function is defined by at least two equations, each of which applies to a different part of the function's domain. For example, the absolute value function, which is known as f of x equals the absolute value, can be defined by the equations y equals negative x. And the reason why, the absolute value graph is a v-shape. So it's y equals negative x for part of the graph whenever x is less than zero. And it is y equals positive x whenever y is greater than or equal to zero. There's not, nothing magical about which one of these has the equal sign. It's just that only one of the two functions could have the equal to zero. evaluate the function. So here we have this function called g of x. We want to find out where x equals 1. Here x is equal to 1 or less than. x is greater than 1. So when we plug 1 in we're going to use this top equation because 1 fits its domain. So we're going to say 2 times 1 minus 1, which is 2 minus 1, we happen to get g of 1 equals 1. 5, so we look in the domains, where does the 5 fit? Is 5 less than or equal to 1, or is 5 greater than 1? Clearly, 5 is greater than 1, so we're going to use the 3x plus 1. to get 15 plus 1, which is 16. So g of 5, our g function, when we plug in a 5, the answer is going to be 16. That's how you evaluate a function when you're working with piecewise. We're going to graph the following piecewise functions. So we're going to start out, we have three equations we need to graph. We're going to start at negative 1 and do a slope of negative 3, positive 2. Positive 3, negative 2. And we connect those dots that are less than negative 2. So at negative 2, we're going to connect the dots that are less than that, that are x's to the left of that. So we're going to connect the dots to the left, and we label our graph. y equals negative 3 halves x minus 1. Then we're going to graph the equation x plus 1. So that has a slope of 1, crosses the y-intercept at 1, and we continue with the slope of 1. We're going to connect the dots from negative 2 all the way up to 1. Now notice how this first equation here has a hollow dot. So we need to make that a circle. It doesn't have a line underneath it x is less than, so we should have a hollow dot there. This one, we should have a solid circle. When x is negative 2, it can only be on one of these tracks. It cannot fall onto both tracks. That would not be a function. So now we're going to connect the dots all the way up until x is 1, and including 1. So this equation is called y equals x 
plus 1. Then we're going to do the equation y equals 3 whenever we're greater than So I'm going to rewrite my equation y equals x plus 1 down here so it can match closer to its equation and y equals 3 up there. Okay, don't be afraid to have the other dots on your page. That's fine. I want to be sure that you recognize your piecewise has these three different graphs because we have three different equations. We know that these equations go on forever in both directions, except we're only looking at them at these domains. When x is less than negative 2, we're on this train. When x is between negative 2 and 1, we're on this train. And when x is greater than 1, we're on this train. Let's try the next one. We're going to graph 2. So all these dots are 2. We're going to graph the ones that x is greater than 3. and we'd have an open dot there because it doesn't include 3. So y equals 3. Then we're going to graph the equation negative x plus 1. So I put in all the dots that would represent, represent that graph. Then I'm going to connect the dots when x is 0 all the way until x is 3. x is 1, x is 2, x is 3. And we have a hollow dot there at 0 because it does not include 0. Then we're going to be at 4. I like to place all the dots, and then I will connect the dots that are less than or equal to zero. So I have three graphs, because I have three equations. Each equation is only connected for its own domain. So we do y equals two, whenever you're three or bigger. Negative x plus one, whenever you're between zero and three, and four, whenever you're less than zero. And we should label our equation y equals negative x plus one. Try to be sure to label all your equations. On the second page, we're looking at f of x. Notice how we have two equations. This is actually our first example of an absolute value. So we're going to graph the line that starts at negative 1, has a slope of 3, So plot all the points, and then connect the points that are x is 1 or bigger. So x is 1 here, x is 2 here, and so forth. So we can write the equation y equals 3x minus 1. We're going to come over here to this equation start at 5, we're going to go down 3 over 1, down 3 over 1, 
make all the dots, but only connect them for the values that are less than one. So here's one, and we're going to connect to zero, and we're going to connect beyond that. So this is y equals negative 3x plus 5. This is a V shape. When you look at the picture, we can't tell here at the vertex which train line, which side of the graph that we're actually on. But when we look at the domain, it is clearly written where the graph exists when x is 1. But if you were to look at the graph itself, you couldn't tell which is which. It doesn't matter which one of these domains includes one, has a line underneath it, it just can't be on both. Because when x is 1, we have to specifically be one or the other equation. So this, what is the name of this graph? What is the type of graph? It is an absolute value. Absolute value function. The way we graphed it here was using an absolute value Well, we can graph absolute value functions by making a piecewise. We graphed this piecewise that represented an absolute value. So now, we're going to take this absolute value and we're going to write a piecewise function for it. Well, we're going to start out with y equals, we're going to do it just as it is, x plus 2. And we're also going to look at it as negative x plus 2. Because what's inside the absolute value could either be positive, just as it is, or it could actually be a negative number for what's inside. Our domains, you take what's inside, you set it equal to zero, and you solve. So you know you're going to have one of your equations that are greater than or equal to negative 2. And then you're going to have your other equation, the opposite of that, which is less than negative 2. So let's clean this up now. This is x plus 2. x is greater than or equal to negative 2. This is negative x minus 2, where x is less than negative 2. Here's our piecewise, and it represents this absolute value. So we're going to start at 2. We're going to graph a slope of 1. We're going to connect the dots that are greater than negative 2. Then we're going to start at negative 2. We're going to graph all the dots that have a slope of negative 1. And we're going to connect all the dots that are less than negative 2. x is less than negative 2. x is 0. x is negative 1. negative 2. x is negative 3, negative 4, and negative 5. So the dots that have negative x's go this way. Your absolute values will never open sideways because that would not be a function. They have to either open up or they have to open down.
Let's try this one. A little trickier. We're going to start out with y. We're going to write it just the way it is. 2 times x plus 1 minus 3. Then we're going to say the opposite of 2 times x plus 1 minus 3. For our domain, we're going to take what's inside the absolute value and set it greater than or equal to zero. And then take what's inside your absolute value and set it less than zero. Now we have to clean this up. So distribute. We get 2x plus 1 minus 3 negative 2x minus 2 minus 3 here we'd subtract across subtract across now we can collect our like terms so we get 2x minus 2 negative 2x minus 5 and our domains is x is greater than or equal to negative 1 and x is less than negative 1 so here's our final piecewise for this absolute value we're going to start at negative 2 we're going to do a slope of 2 We're going to connect the dots that is greater than negative 1. So here's x is negative 1. All down here is x is negative 1. So we're going to start here and connect all the dots that are greater than negative 1. Then we're going to go to negative 5, have a slope of negative 2. Okay, what I'm noticing is we should be hitting the same exact point right here. So I'm going to look back at my work. We should be hitting the same exact point. We didn't hit the same point. Distribute would have been 2x. I should have distributed and make that a 2. Some of you may have noticed that. So this really should have been a 1. Okay, good job if you recognize that. Sorry about that. So we're really at negative 1, and we come down. How did I know something was wrong? Because when I did the second graph, the points had to hit right at that same vertex. So now we're going to connect all the dots that are x is less than negative 1. So I have a y equal to 2x minus 1 and y equals negative 2x minus 5. Notice how I had to go back and check my work. So distribute your 2 in. 2 minus 3 is negative 1.